Hi everyone, we're making progress here. We are at Freudian minute number three. And for this discussion, we are going to be looking at the Negro question. As a part of addressing the Negro question, we're going to be looking at the construct of denial. Denial is a defense mechanism. If you are not familiar with defense mechanisms, defense mechanisms are usually employed in order to keep the ego from experiencing any anxiety or any distress or any upset. And so it's a way of keeping the ego uh, feeling safe. With respect to denial, this is a specific defense mechanism. It's a very basic one. It's a defense mechanism wherein individuals refuse, reject, refute, rebut reality. They refute evidence that's right in front of them. And they block these facts from the external world, from entering into their reality, into their conscious awareness. And by doing this, it keeps the ego free from anxiety. And so that's what we see with this Negro question. There are many dynamics of denial that have been going on with respect to this quote unquote Negro identity. And you're going to see exactly what I mean when we uh, look at this construct. And so when we pull this all together, what we are looking at is a construct of Negro denial. And a part of the Negro denial appears to be a part of a dynamic wherein individuals have been made very uncomfortable with the construct of Negro or the identity of Negro. And so therefore there has been significant denial related to this construct. Also some superimposition of this identity onto individuals who do not actually uh, have this as their legitimate identity. Now let's look at the history of this name. This name is not simply a racial classification and we have been misled to believe that this is a racial classification. We have been told that this is a classification for basically all of the people in Africa. We've been told that this is a classification for many of the people in what's considered the Western Hemisphere. We've been told that this is the classification, this racial classification for a number of collectives that are in these various islands. However, what we find when we dig into this name Negro is that this is not a name for Africans. This is not a name for Americans. This is a European surname. There is an actual family with this name and all sorts of derivatives of this name. So it's not a name that belongs to everyone based upon skin color. And so what we see with the name origin is that it is coming out of Castile, Spain, and Ferrera, Italy. And so the name goes back uh, quite a way there, um, back to about 753 AD. But there's also an indication that there was a bishop uh, also carrying this name in 929. This was a name that was um, understood as a name of distinguished nobles. What's also interesting is that this name appears to suggest a Jewish identity because this is a Jewish surname or a surname that is carried by or was carried by Jewish individuals. Um, and there's also, interestingly, uh, there was a place in Northern Africa identified as Negro land. Now, of course, this seemed kind of odd <laughs> to have a place called Negro land in Africa if everyone just about in Africa was supposed to be a Negro. And so it, it brought up a lot of questions, but what appears to be going on is Negro land was really comprised of the European individuals who came down from Europe and they were in that area and also dispersed into a few other areas. Then you see the migration of this name into the Americas in the 1600s. Interestingly, we have been led to believe that this was related to 
individuals who were enslaved. But what you see is the names when they first enter, they are actually a part of the immigration and passenger list. Negro is not an English word, by the way. And so you see it coming out of the Latin into the Portuguese and the Spanish, and we have it in the mid 16th century, this construct and this word Negro. Again, that's coming out of the Latin. Now let's look at some of the history of this Negro surname. What we see are origins in two places again. We see an origin in Italy, and this coincides with where the name is in current times. And so we see these origins in Italy and origins in Spain. It indicates here with respect to Spain that the Negro surname was first found in Castile in North Central Spain. Now we have the Italian backstory. And so the etymology of Negro, the Negro history in Italy, uh, this name was first found again in this Ferrara area. It's derived from the Italian word Negri, and you will even see individuals who have that as a surname also. Now there's some assumptions here about how the name ended up in Italy, but what we see is it's coming from the Latin. There's also an indication of the name uh, in scripture. And so you see the name going back, you see it in the Greek, you see it here in the Latin. But this isn't, again, this is an actual surname. This is not some general census classification that you can just give to people. It also indicates here that there was some relationship between this place, this province of Ferrara and Venice. Also noteworthy with respect to these surnames is that many individuals didn't have surnames. They didn't have surnames for a long time. And so when individuals did acquire surnames, they were usually associated with individuals who were considered some sort of nobility. And this name is included in that. And just as we saw in the passenger and immigration list, there are many ways of saying this name. So there are all of these variations and transliterations. And so you see Negri, Negro, Nigri, Nigris, Nigra. It goes on Negroni. So it goes on and on and on with these transliterations. And so when you see these, you know that it's referring back to the same construct. And of course, here you see the reference to the Negro settlers in the United States in the 17th century. And so you see this individual, this Ott Negro, which also looks like the full name might be August, um, who landed in Virginia in 1635. And then Phyllis Negro arrived in Maryland in 1648. And so they arrived in a particular area of the United States or the colonies at that time. And so these individuals would have been meeting up with the American Indians in that particular area. But again, this is not a racial classification. These are actual surnames of these individuals. So these are family lines, these are clans, these are tribes of their own. And here you can see a little bit more information about the passenger and immigration list index. It's really interesting when you look at the migration of this name into America. There were very few people with this name starting out, um, but over time, the number of people increased. But there was a consistency in terms of where this name was coming from. This is not a name that was coming out of Africa. This is not a name that was coming from any of the islands. This name was specifically coming from areas related to Italy and Spain. What was also noteworthy is that this is a name that is considered a Sephardic Jewish name. And here you can see in the database a number of variations, again, these transliterations for individuals who are considered Sephardi. And you see the N-E-G-R-A-O, N-E-G-R-E, N-E-G-R-I-N, N-E-G-R-O, 
and again, N-E-G-R-O, N-E-G-R-O-N. And so you see a few <laughs> variations here in terms of this particular surname. And so again, this is coming from a particular group of people. This is not a surname that is coming again out of Africa. And here you can see that Greek biblical reference here. Now you would think, given the fact that there is an entire census identifying millions of people according to this particular label, you would think that the vast majority of individuals with this surname would be in the United States. You would think that the vast majority of these individuals would be in the Caribbean or Africa somewhere, but nope, for the surname Negro, the majority of people are in Italy, Argentina, Angola, Philippines, Spain, Brazil, and France. And so Angola is the only one that stands out with respect to this distribution of this name. Um, even with Angola, however, it's still coming from that Iberian area. And so what you see here is this distribution of the name, but it is not consistent with this entire census uh, dynamic that we've had going on wherein individuals had this surname identity superimposed. You will even see situations where individuals um, who were enslaved were given this as a name, but it was not their name. In reviewing ancestry records, what you see with respect to the surname Negro is that the Negro surname is not in the United States or in the Americas with any significant frequency in the 1600s, the 1700s, or even really the 1800s. But you see this pickup in the 1800s and 1900s, and then it drops off, by the way, um, 2000. What you see is that the individuals are coming from, again, a specific place, and they are going to specific places, by the way. And so here you can see the various names. You can see the birthplace, generally speaking, is Italy. And here you see what appears to be some first generation individuals and some second generation individuals. And so you see this birthplace of Italy, one New York, one in Pennsylvania. And you see them again, they are settling on the East Coast for the most part, New York, New Jersey, and then you have one in California. What's also interesting to note is that the individuals by and large are not classified racially as a Negro. Okay, so here you see additional individuals, uh, again, being born in Italy in the 1800s and migrating to the United States, to Pennsylvania, New York, uh, those areas, again, that Eastern corridor. And here you see an additional collective of Negro individuals. You see Dominic Negro, Louis Negro, Stefano Negro, Antonio Negro, Angelo Negro, um, and all coming out of Italy and settling for the most part on the East Coast. You see one in Colorado. And here you see additional Negroes settling in the Americas. You see John, Luigi, Nicola, Marco, Dominico, Bernardo, again, settling on the East Coast with a few exceptions uh, going into California, all born in Italy. And so, of course, it's noteworthy that you see all of these individuals named Negro. Uh, they are not identified as Negro in terms of a racial classification, but this is their family line. And by and large, they are classified as white individuals or Caucasian individuals, which is also an oddity because 
Caucasian indicates a particular group of people, and a lot of people appropriate that identity, but it doesn't belong to everyone. It belongs to individuals who come from that particular mountain area. Another thing that's noted is that you can also see a number of Negro names coming from individuals who uh, come in from Puerto Rico. And here you see some social security applications and claims information. And you see, again, the individuals with the Negro name born in the 1800s. Um, they are born in Italy. We see one individual born in Puerto Rico. Um, but again, we see this Italy-Spain connection. And here you see some military records, again, with the same thing. So when you start to search for individuals who actually have the surname Negro, you are going to find very few people, first of all. And then after that, the notation is that the people that you will find, they are by and large born in Italy. And this, again, is consistent with the number of people with the surname today. And so you can see with these individuals, World War II, born in Italy, born in Italy, born in Italy, over and over again. And here you can see additional draft records. In this instance, you have individuals who are born in Puerto Rico. Now this particular census record indicated something in addition to the Spain and Italy dynamic. And what you see here are individuals with the Negro surname being born in Prussia. Here you see additional individuals born in the 1920s. Uh, they are in Puerto Rico. And so again, you see the Negro surname, but these individuals again are related to Spain. Now let's look at a few draft registration cards to get a better idea of what's going on here with respect to this mix match with race and surname. And so we see this individual, Charles Negro. Charles Negro was born in 1891 and was born in Naples, Italy. His name is Negro, however, his racial classification is inconsistent with that. Here we see another individual, Luigi Negro. This individual was born in 1904, and this person was also born in Italy. And here you can see more information about this individual whose name is Negro. It indicates here that the person is white, the person has brown eyes and brown hair and sallow skin. And so their skin is considered very light, basically. And here we have Fred Negro, and this individual was born in 1897, also in Italy, and this is their draft registration card. With this individual, this person, Negro, is also identified as white with brown eyes and black hair. This individual has lighter skin that is on the darker end of the lighter spectrum. And here we have Eugenio Negro. Eugenio Negro was born in New York. And so this individual appears to be either a second or third or beyond that uh, generation individual. The mother is Mary Dugato Negro. And so you see that there is a, a continuing Italian sounding name with this family. So this individual is identified as Negro. Now we're going to look at the uh, information about the phenotype. With this World War II registration draft card, we have this individual identified as white in terms of race. Then we have the eyes being brown, the hair being black, and the complexion identified as dark on the light end of the spectrum. And here we have another individual identified as Negro and they were also born in Italy. And next we have an individual identified as John Negro. This individual was born in 1914, was born in New York, 
This individual is identified as having a father named John Giorani Negro. This individual appears to be perhaps a second generation uh, individual or beyond that. We're going to now look at the phenotype information for this person. And here we see another individual identified as Negro again. This individual has gray eyes and black hair with, again, skin that is dark on the light end of the spectrum. As we wrap this up, we see that there are a number of interesting situations going on here with respect to this Negro surname and this Negro identity. One thing that is completely clear at this point is that this Negro identity is not a racial classification in and of itself. And a number of individuals in the United States have been given this identity. This identity has been superimposed on to them, um, but it's not their identity. This definitely is a family name. This is a surname. It's coming out of Europe. It's indicating European ancestry. It is not indicating African ancestry. I don't care how dark the people are. This is not a name that is coming out of Africa. This is not a name that is coming out of America. This name is indicating that an individual is coming out of Europe. And so when individuals have this name attached to them, it is suggesting that they are European or Negropean, um, but they are definitely not originating in the Americas. They are not originating in Africa. And so it's a very specific surname. It belongs to a specific group of people. And we really need to look at why uh, has there been so much denial about this? Quite frankly, I have never, ever met an individual with the name Negro before. Um, I'm assuming based upon these records that uh, the individuals actually exist. I've just simply never met an individual with this name. And so it's very interesting that there are entire nations and collectives of people on entire continents uh, being given this particular name when it is not their name. And so there is a specific type of denial that is going on with this wherein individuals cannot deal with the reality of this construct. It is not a construct uh, that applies to many of the people um, who have taken it on. Well, this is certainly special. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. This concludes our Freudian Minute, episode number three.